Continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of the Prophet Isaiah The Book of the Prophet Isaiah Chapter 19 Chapter 19 The Burden of Egypt Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards. And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. And the waters shall fail from the sea, and the river shall be wasted and dried up, and they shall turn the rivers far away, and the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up, the reeds and flags shall wither. The paper reeds by the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown by the brooks shall wither, be driven away, and be no more. The fishers also shall mourn, and all they that cast angle into the brooks shall lament, and they that spread nets upon the waters shall languish. Moreover, they that work in fine flax, and they that weave networks, shall be confounded. 
and they shall be broken in the purposes thereof, all that make sluices and ponds for fish. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools. The counsel of the wise counselors of Pharaoh is become brutish. How say ye unto Pharaoh, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings? Where are they? Where are thy wise men? And let them tell thee now, and let them know what the Lord of hosts hath purposed upon Egypt. The princes of Zoan are become fools. The princes of Noph are deceived. They have also seduced Egypt, even they that are the stay of the tribes thereof. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail, branch or rush, may do. In that day shall Egypt be like unto women, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over it. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Every one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he hath determined against it. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a Savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord, and perform it. And the Lord shall smite Egypt, he shall smite and heal it, and they shall return even to the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them, and shall heal them. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria the work of my hands, and Israel mine inheritance. Chapter 20 In the year that Tartan came unto Ashdod, when Sargon the king of Assyria sent him, and fought against Ashdod, and took it, at the same time spake the Lord by Isaiah the son of Amos, saying, Go and loose the sackcloth from off thy loins, and put off thy shoe from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. And the Lord said, Like as my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and wonder upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia, so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoners, and the Ethiopians captives. Young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered, to the shame of Egypt. And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia their expectation, and of Egypt their glory. And the inhabitant of this isle shall say in that day, Behold, such is our expectation, whither we flee for help to be delivered from the king of Assyria. And how shall we escape? Chapter 21 The Burden of the Desert of the Sea As whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it cometh from the desert, from a terrible land. A grievous vision is declared unto me, the treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth. Go up, O Elam, besiege, O Media, all the sighing thereof have I made to cease. Therefore are my loins filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold upon me as the pangs of a woman that travaileth. I was bowed down at the hearing of it. I was dismayed at the seeing of it. My heart panted. Fearfulness affrighted me. The night of my pleasure hath he turned into fear unto me. Prepare the table. Watch in the watchtower. Eat, drink, arise, ye princes, and anoint the shield. 
For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go, set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a chariot of asses, and a chariot of camels. And he hearkened diligently with much heed. And he cried, A lion! My Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my ward whole nights. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken unto the ground. O oh, my threshing and the corn of my floor, that which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you. The burden of Duma. He calleth to me out of Seir, Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, The morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye. Return, come. The Burden Upon Arabia In the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge, O ye traveling companies of Dedanim. The inhabitants of the land of Tema brought water to him that was thirsty. They prevented with their bread him that fled. For they fled from the swords, from the drawn sword, and from the bent bow, and from the grievousness of war. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Within a year, according to the years of an hireling, and all the glory of Kedar shall fail. And the residue of the number of archers, the mighty men of the children of Kedar, shall be diminished, for the Lord God of Israel hath spoken it. You have just listened to the Bible reading. And we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray.
There is nothing impossible for the power of God to do. There is no mountain to be that God cannot remove. God will surely fix it for you. By the reason of this trial, we are here. Jesus, Lord, for just giving me time for you and me. By the reason of this trial, by the reason of this trial, we are here. We are here. Your miracles are starting already. You will not be disappointed. God's power, Christ's name, will come in your life and great will be your possession tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you. We believe you. No word of yours will fall to the ground. And for everyone here, everyone there, everyone, everywhere, there is a miracle with their names attached to it. And tonight will be the night of your performance and demonstration in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're looking at Matthew chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 10. It says in verse 10, Thy kingdom come. The kingdom of power. The kingdom of glory. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of grace, the kingdom of all possibilities in your life. He moves us out of the earthly kingdom. He gets us into the eternal kingdom and he establishes us in Emmanuel's kingdom. And then thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. In your life tonight, the will of God. In your family tonight, the will of God. And any negative will will not be done in your life. His will is for your joy, for your happiness, for your protection, for your healing. For your deliverance. And then eventually, after he has blessed you on earth, he will take you to heaven. He's already preparing a place for you. A mansion with your name on the top of that mansion in heaven. And the will of God is that as we enjoy him here on earth, You'll enjoy him in heaven. I will be there. You will be there. We shall be there. I'll see you there. Tonight, we're talking about the wonder of God's will and goodness. The wonder of God's will. And goodness, I need to show you something. Look at this. It's Psalm 145. 
Reading from verse 9. Psalm 145, verse 9. The Lord is good to all. To how many? The Lord is good to all. I said to how many? All of us here, you'll find tonight, the Lord is good unto you. And those online, wherever you are, I come to you to inform you and to tell you the Lord will be good to you tonight. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. Everyone created by God. The tender mercy of the Lord over everyone. And you are included. That's why the mercy of God will bring forgiveness to you. And freedom to you. And miracle to you. You as a man. You as a woman. You as a boy. You as a girl. Praise the Lord. The goodness of the Lord is coming your way. Look at verse 19. In verse 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Look at verse 20 there. In verse 20 it says, The Lord preserveth all them that love him. That's why you are here. You love him. You love the mention of his name. And you love to be in his presence. And the Lord tells us, He preserveth all them that love him. But all the wicked he will destroy. I will not be wicked. I will not be wicked. The mercy of God will come upon your life. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the discovery of God's will in our salvation. The discovery of God's will for our salvation. Number two, the declaration of God's will in our healing. Number three, the demonstration of God's will in our sanctification and satisfaction. Number one, look at number one there, is the discovery of God's will in our salvation. You know, there are people, they have not discovered God's will. And so they say, I don't know whether I will be saved or I will not be saved. They have not discovered God's will for their salvation. They say, I don't know whether I am for destruction or for salvation. They have not discovered the mind of God, the will of God in their salvation. They say, I don't know whether I am the num I'm part of the number appointed for salvation or appointed for the other side. I came to tell you openly, faithfully, courageously, convincingly, you are much for salvation. Look at this in 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 3. And we're talking about the will of God. Look at this now. It says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Look at verse 4. It says, who will have all men to be saved. That finalizes it. Who will have all men, everyone, all his creatures. Jesus came not for a fraction of the world. Jesus came not for the minority in the world. Jesus came not for a part of the world. He came for everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that's you there, that's you there, whosoever believes in him will not perish. You will not perish. Let me see your face there. I said you will not perish. My boy there, my girl there, you will not perish. 
my brother there, my sister there, you will not perish. I wish I could come to you there and tap you and say, I'm talking about you. That you, where are you? That you will not perish. That whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Why? Who will have? all men to be saved if you were thinking before i'm not part of them i'm not there i'm not to get this i'm not going to get that change your mind salvation is available for you and it's very simple it's just like you give yourself to the lord you surrender yourself to the lord you said here am i i learned i just knew you died for me and because you died for me, I will live forever. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? That's it, that's it. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. Look at Second Peter there, chapter 3. We're looking at verse 9. In Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, look at this. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness the people who do not know god they compare god with themselves as they are slack in fulfilling their word so they think god is like them and god is slack they compare god with their neighbors as their neighbors are slack in fulfilling their word they think god is like their neighbor but god is higher than everyone is greater than any everyone he is a perfect god and it says the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering towards what is patient towards what now why hasn't god killed you when you told a lie there are people that told a lie and it just died why hasn't god killed you when you did some naughty terrible evil thing and you say if there is god there okay i've done that now let god strike me and make me die ah, god is not like that you should know that god is patient god is long suffering he is willing to overlook everything you have done he said i could have killed you and i could have justified that when you did this when you did this when you did that but they said no i didn't mark you for destruction i marked you for salvation praise the lord i said praise the lord i said praise the lord that no matter what you have done if god wanted to kill you long long ago he could have killed you but he said no i can't kill this man i love him i won't kill this woman i love her and i'm preparing a place for her and i don't want the mansion i'm preparing for her in heaven to be vacant your place in heaven will not be vacant because he's not suffering towards what not willing that anyone shall perish but that all shall come to repentance all shall come to repentance in the mind of god in the plan of god in the program of god he wants all 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 to come to repentance that's why you are here tonight you're welcome i said you're welcome to repentance to reconciliation to redemption and to the salvation of god to you for you tonight you discover god's will in your salvation amen look at romans chapter 10 verse 9 how simple it is that if thou that what thou is if you shall confess with your mouth 
the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou, thou, who is the thou? You will be saved. Amen. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, form with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see what the Lord is saying? Your own mouth. If you confess Jesus my Lord, Jesus my Savior, Jesus my Redeemer, He died for me. I accept His sacrifice. I accept the offer of His salvation. And I say today, as I give myself to the Lord, I am saved. What you confess with your mouth, no angel, no demon, no Satan can reverse that. If you say, I believe, I repent, I call Jesus my Savior, heaven will register your name that you are saved. <laughs> Where are you? Tonight, heaven will register your name. That who is saved? Who is saved? You are saved tonight. Look at verse 13 there. In verse 13, for whosoever, 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 no discrimination, whosoever, no partiality, whosoever, there is no iron door that will shield you out whosoever there is no wall of demarcation that will take you away from that for whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved final you tonight i said you tonight you know, if you have been, you know, going to meetings, hearing Bible, hearing preachers, and yet you are not sure, am I saved? Am I not saved? Am I reconciled to God? Am I not reconciled to God? Tonight, assurance has come that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You finalize the deal tonight. You are saved in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two, I'm looking at the declaration of God's will for our healing. The declaration of God's will for our healing. I need to remind you that the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, it says, the kingdom come. And it says, Thy will be done in earth as it is done in heaven. What does that mean? As heaven. Those who come into the eternal kingdom of Christ and to Emmanuel's kingdom, the will of God, the will of God will be done in your life. I was waiting for a global choir. Amen. The will of God will be done in your life. On earth, in heaven, there's no cancer in heaven. There will be no cancer in your life. There is no blindness in heaven, and there will be no blindness in your body there. There is no weakness or debilitating sickness I sat down I could not stand up that's not in heaven I walk I'm tired and weary that is not in heaven there's something biting me and biting my lungs that one is not in heaven there's nothing knocking something knocking my brain I see if my brain will scatter all that is not in heaven that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven the will of God for you here on earth is that you will be healed tonight 
you will be well tonight and any infirmity and any sickness and any deficiency and any impotence that is not in heaven will not be upon your life today that will be done here on earth as it is done in heaven angels tell me Gabriel you came and you saw Mary you came and you saw Zechariah tell me what happens in heaven have you ever been sick as an angel never how about the other angels in heaven have they been sick lying down and they couldn't do anything and then they say they don't know the source of the sickness and there's no treatment Gabriel tell me what happens over there it says for all the angels in heaven there's no sickness do you mean that you're always well it says yes and Jesus said that will be done here on earth as it is in heaven that's why I came to tell you today that the sickness in your body as you now connect with Christ that sickness will be taken away anything the devil has been using to knock your head knock your body knock your mind you're free tonight look at this look at this there was a man that didn't know is it God's will for me to be well is it God's will for me to be healed and so Matthew chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 1 Matthew chapter 8 reading from verse 1 when he was come down from the mountain great multitudes followed him look at verse 2 and behold there came a leper I need to tell you the lepers in Israel even in many communities now they were not allowed to come to the synagogue they were not allowed to mix with other people they were not allowed to pray with other people they were not allowed to hear anything so the man was ignorant because he wasn't allowed to come to the synagogue to come to the temple to hear anything about the word and the will of God and so in his ignorance he said if thou wilt because I'm not sure he wasn't sure because it was a leper that was never allowed to mix with the people that's why he said if thou wilt thou canst make me clean if you want to if you desire if it is your will but now you cannot claim ignorance why you have a bible why because you already know he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil you cannot claim ignorance because you know he has said now this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they cast out devils and if they lay their hands on the seed they shall recover you cannot claim any ignorance now like this leper because he gave them power and he gave them authority to cast out devils and to heal the seed and to tell the people the kingdom of God is come unto you now he was ignorant thank God I am not ignorant see it for yourself you know the will of God the will of God is your healing where are you Praise God, as you raise up that hand, heaven has seen that hand. The will of God is that tonight, tonight, you are healed. And now, when you said, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. What did Jesus say? Look at verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will. I will I will he never said I will not to anyone never 
The blind came, I will. The lame were brought, I will. The deaf and dumb came, I will. The demonized came, and the answer is always the same. I will. That will has not changed. Heaven, sky, and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. I will be thou clean, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. The will of God is immediate. Jesus does not say, ah, you don't have enough money, go and come back. You don't have enough substance, go and come back. We've been looking at the register, and they didn't mark your name the other time when everybody was in church or not in church. Go and come back. There is no go and come back. Your healing, your miracle, tonight is immediate. No going and then coming back. My miracle. My miracle is immediate tonight. He will do it for you. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. That is the will of God for everyone. Look at verse 16 there. In that chapter 8, verse 16. And when the evening was come, now, is where we are now. Is this morning or afternoon or evening? Tell me. Tell me. It's the evening of the will of God. The evening and this is the time for your healing. The weather is cool and then the cool virtue of the Lord will flow into your body right there tonight. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick and healed all that was sick tell me how many healed tell me out aloud you know it's like you know all of them are they lined up the first one came so okay you are healed you was healed the next one and then that one tried to, you know, praise him and mention his titles. Like, okay, you're here. And then the third one just came and he wasn't dressing like the other people. He didn't look neat like the other people. And he was uh, coming from, you know, wherever in the world. And Jesus said, ah, how are you like this? Why are you like this? Person, did anything happen like that? Did he reject anyone? No. Healed all that was sick. My night has come. Your time has come. You know, these crusades we've been having, we arch at a crusade just some time ago. The man will tell you himself, he had cancer, cancer internally. And then as he came, he streamed the GCK online and after the prayer, he was healed completely. He was healed perfectly. He was healed permanently. And now he's still enjoying the effect of the healing. All pains gone, cancer gone, like it will happen to you tonight. I said, like it will happen to you tonight. Let the man come up and talk to you tonight and say, just like you are now. That's where I was and I got it. As you listen to his testimony, you will get it. Online friend, you will get it. Let him come. Let him talk to us now. My name is Oniola Nwaju. Last year, I was diagnosed of pedicle, massive uh, pedicle fusion, which means that a lot of fluid in my heart. 
I did some surgery and after the surgery, uh, histology, then I did another surgery and a mask was removed from my chest. And it went for test and it came out that I have primary carcinoma, which is a form of cancer. After the first chemo, which was a little bit terrible, I, I collapsed. I spent that was a week in the hospital. Then after that week, I joined Global Crusade. That was in September. I joined them online. Usually in the evening, I participate in their prayer. And particularly, particularly believing in God, I feel some sensation. But I then I knew that I'll be healed. I strongly believe that I'll be healed. This year, January, I did another test to the glory of God that there's no form of God, no form of cancer in my chest because actually it has spread from my chest to my heart to my lung and everything was healed. And this is a miracle. There's no, there's no other way to describe it. It's a miracle and it's a miracle that needs to be shared and need to be so that everyone you know that what that what God cannot do does not exist. Yes, I need to thank God for the life of Pastor Kumi for giving us this opportunity of joining online. Online in the group, online service is, a, is an avenue for people like us that are maybe in house incapacitated to participate in the glory and the wonderful work of God. Thank you, and I give glory and return honor and adoration to the Almighty God, to my Christ my Savior, and my pastor, my Savior. Praise the Lord! Did it for the man online, and you on land, here. Alpha location is coming your way. You know, as the crusade continued, all far away in Canada, before you get to Canada, from here, from the Alpha location, you get in the plane, you stop, you're in transit, then you move all the way to Canada. And this man was blind. And there was connection. Look at that. Because there is no discrimination with the Lord. Tonight is your night. Connection. I said connection. Don't let's waste time listening to the man all the way from Canada, blind, and the Lord opened their eyes. He was blind. He couldn't see. But an encounter with the GCK Global Crusade with Kui changed his story. And then the Joe Hyman, and uh, he couldn't see very well. He, three, he was recorded blind. And to feel and to know where he's living, he had the fear around him, his stomach falling the things, and sometimes he would hurt himself. And uh, I know because uh, we, the um, power of God had touched him tonight, and he's been here. Now he can go places and do things. He has a walking stick, but he, now he doesn't have to use his walking stick because our Lord God, a doctor Jesus, has healed him tonight. And now, He's happy all the way. Look at Mama Ruth right now. Exercise your face. Oh, you can see her. Come on. Come on. Go be her. Go be her. I was just telling you that in the evening they brought to Christ many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed how many? And healed how many? All that 
were sick. And then in verse 17, it says that it might be fulfilled, which was so spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. Amen. Amen. Point number three now is the demonstration of God's will for our satisfaction and our sanctification. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 3. For this is the will of God. Salvation, this is the will of God. Joy, this is the will of God. Healing, this is the will of God. Deliverance, this is the will of God. Satisfaction, this is the will of God. Sanctification, this is the will of God. All good things tonight, will of God in your life. That you should abstain from fornication. The Lord will do it tonight. The Lord himself has paid the whole price. And everything that needs to be done has been done for the will of God to be fulfilled in your life. Where are you? I said, where are you? It will be done tonight. Salvation, give me a good amen. amen. Healing, give me a good amen. amen. Satisfaction in your life, give me a good amen. amen. And in a work of grace, your sanctification, a good amen. amen. And the Lord is ready for you now. Say, The Lord is ready for me now. Say, The Lord is ready for me now. It will forgive your sin. It will change your life. It will transform you completely. And that blessing and that benefit you need in your life, tonight is your night in Jesus' name. It's bowed, eyes closed. Once you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, once you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your deliverer and redeemer. That he will take away every evil sin and your sin you have committed. He will forgive you. It will be done instantaneously. As bad as closed, you want to surrender your life to Christ right now. And you want to say, yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. I know your will is for me to be saved. And I want that will to be done right now. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Amen. God bless you there. God bless you there. Wherever you are, to the right, to the left, in front, at the back, or outside this place, raise up that hand. Salvation has come. Your deliverance has come. Your forgiveness has come. You are online. And you know the will of God for you is to be saved. Raise up that hand. Have that salvation now. Anyway, you are. If you are raising up your hand, just stand up wherever you are. Stand up wherever you are. It's coming. Immediately. He'll say, I will. And he will save you. He will forgive you. I will. He will set you free. And then he'll write your name in the book of life in heaven. Raise up that hand. Stand up. I'm praying with you now. Father, according to your promise, according to your desire, according to your plan, that you don't want anyone to be lost. You want everyone saved. I bring all these before you. All these on lunch here and all those online. I pray your salvation will come to them now in Jesus' name. Forgiveness for every one of them. Freedom for every one of them. Redemption, reconciliation with God for every one of them in Jesus' name. Confirm their names. 
reaching in the book of life in heaven. Confirmed of the joy of salvation. And a changed, transformed life. Thank you, Lord, because I know it's done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Another global choir. Amen. Brothers and sisters, keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they'll give you the you know thing to feel. Now you are in the kingdom. Feel it faithfully and truthfully. Welcome to the salvation of the Lord. We we'll call on our pastor overseer to lead us now in this time of counseling. Your life is changed. A new life has come. Counselors, please move very fast. Take their data, names, and phone numbers, and then move fast, very, very fast. Go to the far back and cover every area of the ground. A change has come to your life. You can't tell lies anymore. Tell them your name or write it yourself, your phone number, the 11 digits, then your correct address. Because you have given your life to God, your name goes to the book of life. And your name is cancelled from the book of death and calamity. Let's move very fast. Do it very speedily. If you are sitting down there, miracle time is coming. It's coming. Tell the Lord that tonight immediately after the last amen you will rush out you to come and give your testimony because immediately god will do it for you counselors supervisors those who are coordinating let's do the needful as directed by our leaders. Thank you, that brother. Thank you, that sister. Let's do it very fast. If your name has not been taken, please remain standing. And raise up your hand back on to the council law. Let's give them the package of blessing. I hear you. You're giving your own life to Christ. I want to find you to find my connection to Christ. And you will be blessing us right now. Our leaders are going to follow you all. Don't forget, you just gave your life to Christ. Go to our website. This is dclm.org. Forward slash connect to Christ. And yes, right here, yes. you can actually join the rest and we can follow you up. Don't forget, this is the supernatural okay. difference global to say. Like here at the end of the year in Nigeria. And here we are reaching out to every continent and every country of the year. has been a great night here at Kampa to be So many things to do. And I go here, here in your room, here in your house, wherever you are joining us from.
move to another section. Those in the front also, they have covered the area. Move to the next section. You can move to the back, to the right, to the center. Don't say, I finished my area, therefore I'm going. No. Let the work be done. Nobody must, be, must escape the cancel, cancelers. And as you are sitting down, expect your miracle. Expectation brings realization. Expectation brings realization. I will be healed today. The Lord will deliver me today. He will do it for you. He will do it for you. God is here. Healer is here. Supervisors do the needful. I'm still waiting for the far back. I've not seen your flag. There are some people there that are yet to be cancelled. Don't keep quiet. We are telling the Lord, today is my day. The day of supernatural deliverance. He will do it. He will do it. The Lord will do it. Almighty God will do it. The healer is here. The deliverer is here. At the far back, we are still waiting for you. Supervisor at the far back. Okay, I can see your flag now. God bless you. We can rise up on our feet and begin to tell the Lord, tonight is my night. Tonight is my night. Night of testimony. Praise the Lord. Tonight is my night. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. No sickness over there. No sickness on your body. Anywhere you are now, here, Alpha location, there, online, healing is coming to you. You raise up one hand and you lay the other hand upon yourself. And when you hear that final amen, so let it be, so it is, it will happen. One hand up, the other hand, or you have the challenge. Father, in Jesus' name. What a glorious opportunity to know that our healing is your will. And your will will never be contradicted. When you say yes, nobody can say no. Therefore, Lord, I come for everyone here, everyone over the radio, everyone over the television, everyone online. Lord, I pray that healing, that deliverance, which is your will, do it now for everyone in Jesus' name. That tumor, the fibroid, and that swelling, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Cancer, dry up in Jesus' name. 
also be healed in Jesus name insanity madness I command that demon of madness come out in Jesus name the pile you are healed in Jesus name vomiting blood stealing blood and urinating blood you are healed in Jesus name pain in your bone pain in your joints arthritis be healed in Jesus name every form of sickness in your body from the top of your head to the tip of your toe the hand of the Lord touch you right now here to my right to my left in front of me there far at the back receive your healing in Jesus name my online audience I talk to you directly and I send forth the power of God unto you directly anywhere you are any congregation any community any home anywhere be healed in Jesus name Lord let there be demonstration everywhere manifestation everywhere definite healing everywhere miracle everywhere thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord it is done in Jesus name I pray it has happened you have got it do what you are not able to do before your miracle is already there with you